In a previous video, I went over five different home automations you can do to help conserve energy that I use to help save up to roughly $142 a year in just waste electricity. And in this video, we'll be going over four more home automations that will help keep money in your wallet while also saving you energy and time with the help of the sponsor of this video, SwitchBot. SwitchBot has partnered up with If This Then That to take part in the Energy Challenge. If you aren't familiar with the Energy Challenge, don't worry, as I will be going over what it is and how you can take part in it later in this video. SwitchBot is one of the only other product lines I'm willing to buy that requires a separate hub to integrate into my main smart home hub, which is required if you want to connect your SwitchBot devices to the internet for remote control or to other third-party services such as If This Then That, Google Home, or SmartThings. If you don't need any of that though, then mostly all SwitchBot devices can be controlled locally by your phone as long as you are within Bluetooth range of that device. SwitchBot has several great products that allow for retrofitting many different household things without having to throw them away, and they always seem to be coming up with new things to turn smart. With their retrofit capability, all of the SwitchBot devices can be easily installed and removed if needed, which is great for renters, students living in dorms, or for those of us who don't like to necessarily have to change things out to get some home automation capabilities. One of their more recently released products, the SwitchBot Lock, has been working great for me for several months and has a few features I haven't seen with other smart locks, which is something they typically do by adding one or several features that you wouldn't typically see on other similar smart home products. The first automation is a real lifesaver in the colder months. I have a smart thermostat that is able to heat and cool the house based on different room temperatures, and I have a whole home humidifier. But sometimes, extra humidity is needed at night when someone is sick. And because I have a lot of older windows, I'm not able to just crank up the humidity for the whole house without causing a lot of window condensation and damage. Not to mention, running the HVAC system just to add humidity to a single room is very wasteful. So with an in-room humidity sensor and the SwitchBot smart humidifier, I'm able to increase the humidity to a desired level for a specific room without running the whole home humidifier, which also requires the HVAC system to run. Not having the house HVAC and humidifier running not only helps save energy, but with being able to control the amount of humidity within a specific room, allows to adjust the maximum allowed humidity for that room based on the outside temperature to prevent damaging my older windows. For example, if the outside temperature drops below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, the humidifier will turn off once the room hits 35% humidity. Likewise, if the outside temperature drops below 20 degrees, the humidifier will be turned off once the room hits 25% humidity. As an added bonus, my good morning routine makes sure that the humidifier is turned off so that it isn't left on accidentally all day. This automation does require a SwitchBot hub to allow for communication with other smart home platforms, and you will need some form of outside temperature information, along with an indoor humidity sensor. For me, I'm using WebCore and SmartThings for the actual logic of my automation, along with controlling the humidifier. I also have a weather station that feeds SmartThings near real-time weather information to allow for outside temperature knowledge. You can also accomplish this automation by connecting SwitchBot and your outside temperature source to If This Then That and using filter code. The second energy saving automation not only helps save energy and money, but also helps keep your house comfortable during the summer. In the summer months, the sun shining on your windows will quickly heat up your home, which can make it uncomfortable to be indoors, and can increase your energy bill if you have air conditioning but with the help of curtains, you can help keep the heat at bay. Using SwitchBot Curtain, I'm able to automate several of the curtains in my home very easily and include them in several home automations, like automatically closing my curtains when it's really sunny out. To accomplish this, I'm once again pulling data from my weather station so that I can tell the UV levels at my house. If the UV levels detected by my weather station are higher than three, my front facing curtains will automatically close between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. I pick this time range because that's when the higher UV levels typically correlate to the sun hitting the front of my house. For this automation, I'm actually using If This Then That with filter code to determine if the weather station has detected high enough UV levels at the correct time frame to then trigger a WebCore piston via webhooks. Having it set up this way allows for me to easily add or remove curtains to the automation as needed and will allow for me to add in a bypass to the automation as well. With the SwitchBot curtain, not only am I using it to help keep my house cool, but I also have other windows with curtains automated. For example, I have the living room curtains open in the morning and close at sunset automatically, and have my bedroom curtains close when I trigger my good night routine. If you haven't heard of the Energy Challenge, it is sponsored by If This Then That, who has partnered with SwitchBot and other smart home manufacturers to help share how home automation can be used to help save energy and money using smart home tech. The goal of the Energy Challenge is to save $100,000 through home automation by the end of the year. And if you want to take part and help reach that goal, you can do so in four simple steps. 
Connect your devices and smart home services together to create automations to save energy like the ones covered in this video. Calculate how much money you roughly save through the automations you've set up. Commit to running those automations for at least one year to really help create impact. And finally, submit your energy saving automations to if this then that. The goal is very close to being met already, and I would love to see that goal surpassed, so make sure to take part if you can. If you are looking for other home automation ideas, I'll have a playlist in the description below for other high energy challenge videos made by several smart home automators taking part. With working from home for the last few years, I've created a home office automation that controls a few different things and has evolved over the years. Initially, it would just automatically open my office curtains when I start my day. And now it will notify me if I'm sitting for too long, as well as turn on my air purifier and then turn it off if I'm away from my desk for more than 15 minutes. This automation is triggered by a motion sensor I have mounted under my standing desk. I went with the SwitchBot motion sensor as its sensitivity is easily configurable and its base is magnetic, which means easy mounting. Not only does the motion sensor act as the main trigger for the automation to run, but I also use it to determine if I'm away from my desk to turn off my air purifier. My air purifier is plugged into a smart switch to control when it turns on and off. The purifier has a physical knob, so loss of power doesn't cause any issues for it to start back up. At 22 to 32 watts of running, depending on the settings, forgetting to turn off the air purifier can add up over time. For determining if I'm standing or not, I decided to just mount a contact sensor with mounting putty to my computer. When the desk is at a sitting height, the contact sensor is closed. And when it is at a standing height, the desk contact sensor is open. It's an easy enough solution, and luckily my computer case has feet that get pretty close to the desk leg. And with the way the under desk motion sensor is positioned, even when standing, it will still contact that I'm working and keep the air purifier running. I'd love to add more to my home office automation. So if you have any suggestions on how to make work less soul crushing through automation, make sure to let me know in the comments below. The next automation uses SwitchBot's original claim to fame, the SwitchBot Bot. I really enjoy my drinks being ice cold, so naturally that means the refrigerator I bought would have a poorly designed ice maker, keeps freezing over. So eventually I bought a standalone ice maker that I figured I could put on a smart switch to turn it on and off before I wake up so that I'd always have ice to use and didn't have to leave it on all night. Of course, nothing can ever be easy and when the ice maker loses power, even when on, it will not turn on until the power button is pushed again. Luckily with the SwitchBot bot, I can control the ice maker like I want without having to buy a different ice maker. With the ability to turn on and off the ice maker, I have two different automations set up. The first is that the ice maker turns on an hour before I normally wake up and turns off an hour before I normally go to bed. This makes it so I have ice for my first drink of the day and it's not running unnecessarily at night when I usually don't get a drink. The second automation is that if I'm away from my house for more than 30 minutes, the ice maker will turn off. Both automations help save on energy waste and reduce unneeded wear on the ice maker, which will hopefully mean it will last longer, which also helps me save money in the long run. If you want to check out any of the SwitchBot devices I used in this video, I'll have links in the description below. And don't forget to check out and consider taking part in the energy challenge. I'd also love to know what automations you are using in your home. So make sure to let me know in the comments below. I recently turned my boring gate into a smart gate so that I can use it in automations. And if you want to learn how I did that for just $15, make sure to check out my video going over it right here. I cover everything you'll need to get your own DIY smart fence and go over several of the automations I use the smart fence in. Thank you for watching.